Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Do you have your heart set on picking up an RTX 5090? Well, aside from the fact that these things are probably going to be pretty expensive, you also may need to concern yourself with potentially a new power supply as well. Because the rumor is that the PSU requirements for the 5090s are going to be pretty demanding. Not only in terms of the power required to run the damn things, but also the connectors. I'm going to talk to you guys about that plus some updated benchmarks for Intel's Battle Mage, and also an alleged release date for the 5800X 3D. And we're going to talk about all of that, plus some more stuff, after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. This video is sponsored by scdkeys.com, but let's check out the Windows and Microsoft Office, starting with this deal for Windows 11. If you were to purchase this from the official Microsoft Store, it would cost you $199 US dollars. But you can use scdkeys.com and you can grab it for just $23.50 using our code RD25. If you prefer to stick with Windows 10, after all, you can still upgrade it later on down the line to Windows 11 if you choose, this can be available hugely discounted. And combined with that back-to-school sale with our code, the price goes down to just $16.80. If you're concerned about the legitimacy of the keys, here you can see us going through the payment process, receiving the code, and of course that all-important activation. And obviously this is a private account, they did not set this up for us, we made it ourselves with one of our own private email addresses. Plus, you can use our code RD25 to save that 25% on Microsoft Office codes. So that would make Microsoft Office 2016 available for just $28.60 if you're using our code. But these are just some of the uh, keys available, and there's just a huge library of games, Windows, and Office codes, as well as much more. You can check the description to head straight to Windows 10, 11, or Office, and use our code RD25 to save yourself 25% off of your order. Thanks again to STD Keys for sponsoring the video. So, just to give you guys a quick reminder, the RTX 50... Uh, cards such as the 5090 are expected to be announced either later this year or early next year. Frankly, I'm probably expecting next year to be a more likely occurrence for NVIDIA to announce these things, simply because at this stage, the company really have no exact stress on them. There is no competition in the high end, which also has, of course, a ton of other problems, not least of which pricing concerns. So honestly, it is pretty much NVIDIA's ball game, and they can announce things mostly at their leisure. With that said, they also do have partners to please, so it's going to be very interesting to see what the announcement date is let me know in the comments when you're expecting to be able to buy one of these things so as you're probably aware the next generation of power supplies will support the 12v 2x6 standard and this is of course an update to the older standard that we found in the uh, rtx 40 cards that of course well let's just say had a little bit of controversy with connectors burning out and well there was a lot of debate whether that was user error or whether it was a fault with the design and so on and so forth. But either way, the next generation of cards from NVIDIA, it's going to be interesting to see whether RDNA 4 also adopts this new standard. But either way, the next generation of NVIDIA cards, as well as, of course, um, high-end next generation power supplies, those are all going to support this new standard. Now, an article at Tweaktown said, and I quote, Companies are lining up new hardware, including power supplies or PSUs designed for the next generation of PC gaming and desktop AI. For example, MSI's impressive new 1600 watt MEG AI 1600T PCIe 5 and the 1250 MPG A1250 it's also available in 1850 watts was shown during a recent MSI uh, tour. But interestingly, these new power supplies feature two 12V 2X6 power connectors. This is an update to the 16 pin 12VHPWR that can deliver 600 watts in a single cable. MSI's reason for the additional um, connector is to support the next generation of cards, so could we see this for the 5090 launch requiring two power connectors? Possibly. End quote. So again, I will leave a link, of course, to the Tweaktown article that was discussing this. Now, it is worth noting that there have been rumours that the 5090 does go up to 600 watts. Um, now, personally, and I've mentioned this in several videos at this point, I've 
been told by several sources at this point that there are multiple different configurations of the 5090 as well as different BIOSes that are being tested at NVIDIA. This is very standard stuff and uh, it's certainly not uncommon for NVIDIA to kind of test things out, figure out what the upper limits of a GPU is. And it's not just like for retail configurations, but it's basically just testing, hey, what can we potentially offer our partners in terms of overclockability? What actually is voltage scaling like? There's just a ton of different reasons that they do this. And you'll probably remember that the RTX 30 cards, the RTX 40 cards, they all had a lot of rumors concerning, you know, absolutely bonkers power supply requirements. And yeah, so in some ways, this is pretty much the same thing over again. But regardless of that, one of these connectors should easily fall within the spec of 600 watts. So this leaves a couple of different possibilities. One, that this rumor has simply no validity. In other words, it's not that, you know, there are no power, uh, there is not two of these power connectors on the PSU, but instead that, again, they do state that it's for AI. So potentially this is gonna be for multi-GPU desktop configurations or folks who are screwing around with AI. And obviously in some cases, you're gonna have multiple GPUs for, you know, whatever reason. So that could be one of the, one of the, you know, one of the driving forces behind this. It also might simply not be the 5090. So I've already mentioned in a couple of videos at this point that I have been told that a Titan is in the works. Now, the power requirements are allegedly going to be higher than the 5090, but I was told around 600 watts. I don't think it's going to be much more than that, frankly, but it's possible that because of this, uh, they also just want a little bit of additional headroom or again multi-gpu configurations could potentially be empl uh, uh, employed the third potential is that it is for the 5090 and only for a, a single 5090 but what they're trying to do is basically balance the power draw across a couple of different connectors now again while a single one of these connectors should easily be able to uh, handle 600 watts well let's just be honest it's not always the case that all parts are created equally and there can be some issues with tolerances but also you have AIBs or partners who will start to offer highly overclocked variants or people can mod their own BIOSes and so on and therefore power draws can be absolutely bonkers at that point especially if people are cooling the GPUs with like LN2 or chasing world records. Now, again, I really want to stress that this is not perhaps something that the average person is going to have to worry about, i.e. if you're just someone who just, and this is not, you know, a criticism. I mean, frankly, even I don't really overclock my GPU that much. I, I have um, a Game Rock variant, which has a 450 watt BIOS. So I actually flashed it to a 600 watt BIOS, screwed it around with it a little bit, um, and yes, I changed the uh, connector as well. And I was like, you know what? It's just not really worth this extra power draw. And I just flashed it back to the 450 watt. I mean, I guess I didn't really have to flash it back. I could have just left it alone because, you know, if you limit the BIOS and, uh, sorry, limit the power draw and software, it's not like it's going to start pulling more voltage anyway. You get the idea. Point is that for a lot of folks who just buy the card, put the drivers in, make it work, it's not going to be a big deal. The configuration, of course, of the 5090, there's been a lot of specifications. It's based on the GB202 die, uh, with a 448-bit bus being enabled for the 5090. Uh, obviously, the full bus is 512-bit. I have heard that we're looking at around 160-ish SM. However, at this stage, that doesn't mean anything because it could just simply be one configuration that was being tested. Therefore, NVIDIA could crank the final configuration up significantly higher. For what it's worth, um, GB202, GB202, Jesus, I can't speak, goes up to 192 SM. But let's just be honest, it's unlikely that they're going to want to enable all of those. I think like 100 and I don't think it's going to be like under 150 because that would just be pretty anemic in terms of performance. But I also wouldn't be surprised if they don't go much above like 170. Obviously, I'm rounding up and down the numbers here. Um, simply, it gives them that extra little bit of flexibility for releasing Titan in the future or TI variants. Plus, the very best dies 
well, let's just be honest, they're going to be used for products in like the data center or something like that anyway. Also, I'm going to cover a benchmark for an Intel Battle Mage GPU. Obviously, this is the next generation of Intel graphics cards. The rumor is that the full die, the highest end configuration, should I say, is going to have 32 XC units. However, they are drastically different in terms of their configuration. And obviously, Intel have disclosed some of this stuff publicly anyway versus what we saw with Alchemist. So you can't just say, well, 32 equals the same thing as what we would have with the previous generation either way the performance rumors are roughly around an rtx 4070 maybe a little bit more frankly i am still a little skeptical but obviously at this point there has not been exactly a ton of meaningful gaming benchmarks to this end we do actually have a compute focus one and this is actually geek bench uh, bench leaks on twitter spotted this however i want to give courtesy credit to wccf tech here now, just as a warning, this is only with 20 XC2 cores. So again, the highest end configuration is rumored to be G31 and based on 32 XC cores, whereas this is G21 and again only has 20 XC cores, 12 gigabytes of memory and the clock frequency, assuming it's being detected correctly, which is a whole different story, is 1200, uh, sorry, 2850 megahertz, 1200 megahertz, that would be a bit, a bit weak, bit weak, uh, 2850 megahertz. And the score here, I'm gonna round a uh, up just a little bit but it's 98,000 to put that into some level of context this means that it's scoring a little bit more than an a750 however while that doesn't sound particularly amazing you have to remember that again one this is not the full configuration two god knows what the state of the drivers are and the bioses and stuff like this at this stage so it's quite difficult to know and thirdly this is compute focused and it is not necessarily indicative of gaming performance ultimately i think amd and intel can have a pretty good time of them uh, for themselves if they price their next generation products competitively um, obviously, RDNA 4 is also expected to, to launch early next year as well. I think that RDNA 4 also could be a very interesting proposition. Uh, one source was actually describing it to me as kind of like Polaris 2.0, which I guess is also slightly wrong. <laughs> there was already uh, Polaris 2.0, kind of, with the RX uh, 500 series, but still, you get the idea. In other words, it's basically not going for new levels of performance it's essentially just cost reducing or should i say having performance of the current generation albeit at a much cheaper price it's going to be very interesting if that is the case i'm really hopeful it is because honestly the prices of even mid-range gpus at this stage are just absolutely taking the pests quite frankly and obviously you know, at this rate, if things don't continue, we're going to be spending like a thousand bucks on like a 70 class card and that obviously there just is a point where this is just not sustainable. People are just not willing to pay this. Um, I guess it's possible that APUs in the future could be a good way as well to remedy that. But it seems that the Strix Point Halo is allegedly going to be very expensive as well. So I guess we'll just wait and see. And I just want to finish the video off mentioning the 5800X3D because allegedly we're going to see the X3D parts of Zen 5, at least one of the SKUs, launching in October. I want to give a courtesy credit to Harakazi5719 on Twitter, but this information is originating on Chip Hell. Now, I did personally hear that uh, the 8-core X3D variants may launch later this year. I think I mentioned that either in the last video or the video before that. I can't remember if the last one was the PS5 or whether it's the Intel video. Uh, my brain has just gone to mush over the past several days because I'm just trying to get uh, stuff ready as we are... Um, going to be going up to see a friend's wedding so just trying to panic get everything prepped for that but um, regardless yeah i have heard that that might be the case uh originally all of the x3d variants or at least several of them was originally as a apparently going to be launching later this year but for whatever reason uh, AMD decided to delay them but now it's possible that only the eight core variants are going to launch so I'm not quite sure what the story is there um obviously 
uh, in about a month's time, Intel's Arrow Lake processors will also see the light of day. I'm going to be very curious to see how the market perception is for Arrow Lake, quite frankly. Um, obviously, Intel did hurt its reputation quite a bit with the uh, Raptor Lakes, um, you know, <laughs> fiascos, if you will. With that said, it's also going to be really just down to performance, I think. Like, performance, heat, and overall just the reliability. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how the, the, the processes sell, I think. With that said, take care of yourselves, guys. Bye for now.